And today you join me in the workshop and we're here to remove the engine out of the race car. Previously mentioned, the car seems to be burning coolant. Now I can confirm this by if we have a look in the expansion tank here, that's empty. Uh, we've already seen coolant coming out of the exhaust in the previous video. So we're going to see if we can find out exactly what the root cause was, whether it was head gasket, whether it's a cracked cylinder head or even a cracked liner. But we're going to get the engine out and we'll get it stripped down. On a brief rundown of what we're going to be doing then, I'll get the front bumper out of the way, probably take the headlights out just for ease and space around here. We're going to be doing a little bit of extra work around the bumpers, there's no harm to get that out. Then looking at the engine, it's predominantly much the same as what we'd see on a road going FK8, but with a few changes probably around the bulkhead area. So I'll get all the pipe work off, up to the radiator, likewise with the exhaust, and then some of the coolant pipes going further back. But the differences that you'll start to see when we get into it is the quick release wiring connectors and the quick release plumbing back to the bulkhead. So for the brakes going back through, for the clutch going back through, it's all quick release so that the engine can be dropped out in you know, race conditions and another engine put in quickly. So just as we get into this, one thing you notice here is that we've got a lot of Jubilees on this engine. Every pipe, uh, whether it's water or air, that's going to the engine. The guys at Honda have already replaced them with Jubilees rather than the usual pinch clips. Now we've seen it on the FK2s where the pinch clips start to rust after a while, especially the ones on the lower radiator. But this is more to combat um, any hose slipping or leakage during those sort of extreme conditions. So if you're serious about doing any track days and want to get the most out of your car, keeping it reliable, I'd suggest putting Jubilees on in place of the usual pinch clips. Ah, so that tells us something there straight away. This spark plug, you can see it's wet there, just compared to number one, you'll see that how this tip's all nice and dry, this one's wet. That's a pretty surefire sign that we've got a coolant leak into number two now. I'll just pull number three out and see if that's any different. Yeah, so from number three back to how we're looking on number one there as well. And imagine number four is probably looking the same, yep. With the bumper out of the way, nice little surprise here. So I remember supplying this years ago, but it looks to be that the car's still running one of our Dream Mark 1 intercoolers. Now this we can tell because it's got the welded end tanks here and new intercoolers come with cast end tanks. Uh, but something else that caught our eye, obviously the radiator, but the intake that the guys at Honda have made up. So effectively just a panel filter, cable tied to the bumper there. So I'll pull it out of the way and you'll be able to see a little bit more how they've gone about this. So just the panel filter there, looks to be just an FK8 filter, but with a 3D printed duct, which then travels up just behind the headlight and directly into the turbo. So another good indication that we're on the right track here, once we drain the oil we can see that the oil and the coolant had mixed leaving us this murky liquid here which is the combination of oil and water combined. Another little difference we've just picked up on, so on the FK8 we usually have a water to oil cooler for the gearbox, what they've done is they've used a FK2 oil cooler here, so I can only presume this has been done for ease of access uh, when fitting you know, another gearbox to the car under race conditions that they're not having to mess around with bleeding out coolant into the gearbox cooler and it can just be a direct fit you know, quickly get the car back on track. Right, so that's everything off the engine now. You can see it's pretty loose, it's, it's hanging in there on two mounts. So it's had all the plumbing and the pipework taken off from around the front and the back. 
The subframe's down now as well, so it just leaves me to put it back onto the trolley, undo the two engine mounts, and then lift the car off with the engine sitting on the trolley, hopefully. So there we have it, the engine's out and we're going to get stripping now and see if we can actually get to that root cause. A few ancillaries to take off but uh, I've been through these a few times so it won't take us too long. So first things when I get to the engine once it's on the uh, trolley here like this is we're stripping off the wiring loom. So I'll go around it now, on this loom in particular we've got a few cable ties holding bits of loom in place so we'll get some of them out of the way uh, as I would do usually on a standard engine. Some of you for keen eye may have noticed that we've got a secondary set of fuel injectors and rail here. Now the guys at Synchro, they were playing around with seeing the benefits of port injection and if it would have helped them in the 24 hour series with a bit of extra cooling to the engine. But we're not going to be using this what we're going to be doing in time attack, so this will come off and we'll just replace with the normal inlet manifold back into its standard place. So with the timing chain stripped off now, I can get to the camshafts and looking at where I need to get to, to the head bolts, you'll notice that I need to get this high pressure fuel pump area out of the way so that I can access the last bolt down there uh, to release the head. So just pulled the head off and to look at the gasket initially, it doesn't look too bad. In the places where I'd expect it to blow through, it hasn't, it, you know, it looks like the gasket's intact. What we did see though, is a little bit of water around the outlet port of number two cylinder. So that's kind of pointing back towards the fact that we could have a cracked cylinder head here. But I'll go ahead and get this lot cleaned up, 
we just finished up for today, so we'll get this pressure tested tomorrow, see where we're at, and hopefully diagnose as a cracked cylinder head. Either way, we've got our race engine from the grey FK8 on the shelves upstairs, so we'll get the forklift out, we'll pull that down, and that's what we'll refit into this car. Remember, if you like the video today and you want to see more from us, hit the like, share, and subscribe buttons, and feel free to leave us a comment below. Bye.